got me actually. It is so sharp. You can see it's all mountain, really yeah. peaky. Gonna suck us if it's, it's really on there. We have to wrench that thing off. Yeah. You know, it's... <laughs> she's a little gooey. <laughs> That's good though. She sealed good then. Yeah. It smells like a garage. All right, guys. Today's video, we're gonna be working on this 03 Suzuki RM85. Um, customer state's blown up, so we're gonna see exactly what's going on in the top end. Uh, as you can see, the kicker don't move at all. Maybe we'll find something simple, but from the way it looks, not so good, huh? First thing we're gonna do is start taking the plastics off. You guys see, we saw remove the seat. It's just what eight millimeter bolts. Yeah. A couple eight millimeters. What you do though is you put the bolts back in where you found them. So right. they don't lose them. Right, valuable lesson there. And you know which size, how long mm -hmm. they were. Yep. Along with the plastics, we're, all in. we're gonna remove the yeah. gas tank, exhaust pipe, which is a nice FMF patty, full pipe with silencer, so that's nice. Once we get the tank, plastics, exhaust, we'll drain the coolant, which we're gonna drain the lower uh, radiator hose here. Drain that out, and then we'll the... we'll disconnect the upper hose, which is on top of the head, after we get in there. But if, you don't have to remove the tank if you're doing a top end, but it's just going to be easier to see everything that way. Then we can see if we have any issues underneath, you know, if a cable's getting chafed or, or something. <laughs> She's a little gooey. <laughs> That's good, though. She sealed good, then. Yeah. It smells like a garage. <laughs> nice. And then just pull yes. this strap. Just a quick, quick Ugh. strap there. Quick strap there. And then a bolt or two in the front. Two in the front. I think you have to pull off the. Uh, you have to get the shot off on this side. Another eight mil. Yeah. A couple like eight mils. One down there on the side, up by the front stem. But it's much easier to take all the cosmetic plastics off. So you can see what you're doing when you're working on these. All right. So exhaust pipes removed. Pretty simple. One bolt was up here, which is like that uh, anti-vibration dampener, rubber piece. Um, and then the two exhaust springs, one was minimal at best. Yeah, one was kind of snarled around pretty good. But yeah, a lot of times these will break off. Very common. Yep, it's just a thing so it doesn't vibrate. And then it also won't rub through the pipe against the frame. So that's off. Next thing we're gonna do is we're loosening this one up. We'll drain this first, because this will probably drain most of the coolant out of the lower one. Yep. Then we only got a little bit of residual up here. Yeah. So you're not dumping it all the main over. The main thing is if you were actually doing this and you had like to worry about the bottom end, you don't want coolant getting in the bottom end, because there's coolant right up top here, and then as soon as you take the head off, the coolant's gonna rush in the right cylinder and, and fill it all up with coolant. So. New top end, new I oil. have to get rid of a little more. You wanna pick? I could. Hose clamps are stuck in there. Yeah. Here, give me a oh, He's got her coming. She's working though. All right. Oh, you know that tape. She's gonna go gurgly, gurgly. Kaboom! Oh, nice green color. Yeah, yeah. But it's a very, very small system. I mean, it right. doesn't hold a lot of coolant on one of these bikes. Not at all. Yeah, crack the cap. Yeah, Yep, there she goes. The so now the so pressure is released. The pressure is released. Really mm -hmm. We actually didn't make a mess, dude. That's impressive. That that we mess. didn't need the bag of kitty litter today. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, that one's going to be a different size. Oh, and there's a full <laughs> from before. Nice. Yeah, just taking off the upper now, guys. And the, like Low, said, lower first, otherwise this uh, is yeah. gonna make a mess. A huge here. mess all over the motor. Perfect. Alrighty. So we got both coolant hoses disconnected now. And we are going to pick up here once Spike gets back. I got L Spike working on getting the power valve cover off while Sparky is loosening up the radiator. Getting a little more room. Just a little more maneuverable, less things in the way. 
And Less honestly, things that dirt can fall off of and get in places. Said, the more room, the, it's kind of open in here. Yeah. And if we do, we're probably going to pull the motor and uh, do mm. seals, all that stuff. So. Yeah, but we're, right now, we're just kind of seeing what we all need to order, see kind of what happened, where it's stuck, if it's stuck at the bottom, stuck at the top, you know, and that'll kind of lean us towards what happened to it, I guess. Right. Make sure the crank, if, it, if the crank's obviously stuck, well, these 85s had issues with, uh, with rod bearings, mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely not out of the question. A little tight there? What's up, dude? Nipples is in there. <laughs> what are you looking at? These Boy. might be things you'll run into. <laughs> oh, hang on. Let me turn it again. Oh, she's gonna, she's gonna nip and snap. Try to go in again. Oh, uh, it's already. All right, so you actually do have to take the power valve uh, cover off to get at the front cylinder stud, the nut right here, and you'll also have to take this linkage off of the uh, power valve assembly, which is going to stay in the case area and the rest of it will lift off. So it is one thing you're going to have to do. It's four screws. You can use a Phillips screwdriver or an eight mil socket. And Mark's still having fun with a bolt on the radiator that's a little tight. Yeah, they call yeah. that factory spec right there. Mm -hmm. With the coolant drain, we have less spillage when we get inside. So. The nice thing about this is a case reed, which, you know, the reed valve goes in the not, crankcase. It's a not cylinder. a cylinder reed, so you don't have to worry about taking the carburetor assembly off. Right. As of right now, mm -hmm. you can pull the cylinder top end without pulling the intake. And what size is that, 12? 12. And they're going to be Tight. copper washers on all four of these. And what a copper washer is, it just seals, seals up. It's a little softer, you know, so it keeps everything uh, in, coolant, heat, fuel. Combustion. Combustion. Hit the other one on this side. Right. You want to grab that side. Well, they torque to spec, dude. Good and tight. Oh, yeah, good and tight. Yeah, they're tight. But they're nice with acorn nuts. Is you don't get you don't dirt get, on the end yeah. of the threads, and they can't really. They come off nicer than they a. They can't be like an open this radiator bolt. bolt that, um, Less oxidation that way. And they did try a new spark plug. I can tell it's brand new. We definitely pulled the plug initially when they when they got it, and it. Uh, Looked brand new, Magnetic still didn't turn over. Obviously they wouldn't run either because it doesn't turn over. So I think it's got O-rings on the head too. You want a little rubber mallet? Uh, yeah, it might be. Yeah, we'll have to get a little tappity tap on her. All the washers are on. And predictions of what's behind door number one. Yeah, what's your prediction? Predictions, uh, guys. <laughs> Anything? <laughs> wow. You know, I saw an exciter one. <laughs> With a crack. The only thing that's gonna suck is if it's, it's really on there. We have to wrench that thing off. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be tight. Should use a brass or rubber removal. Right at top dead center, dude. She's she is hung at hot top dead. You just gotta pull the stud patterns a little tight. Oh, make sure you oriented which way it came off. Just um, like that. Cool the pogey, in the back. The pogey's okay. on the back. Looks right at top dead center. She's stuck. But well, you can see pinging from the bearing. Yep. I bet you that needle bearing or something let go. You see all yeah. the dings? What's the head? You got a like? flashlight, Mike? To kind of get a better view of it. Oh, yep. yeah. I bet you that bearing or a piece of ring. I bet you a piece of ring broke. Yep. Yeah. You can see it's all, there's a bunch of. A little detonation. You want to shine a flashlight? I wonder Mike? what the old spark plug looks like. There's like, yeah. no one's got Well, it would be very aluminum metallic y. So you can. Yeah, I'll give you guys a little better look. I got a flashlight. You can see it's pit, a huge chunk got right stuck there. there. And the piston, the piston still moves, so so the rings aren't stuck, and it's weird because it's stuck, unless a rod bearing let go and it came up to the top, and that's why it's stuck. Right. Because what happens when the rods, so what happens when the rods stick and they get stuck at top, it just it just saws. Yeah. You know, it just mm. it just welds itself to the to the crank. So let's get a 12, crack these loose. And then the cylinder should be able to cylinder yank it. We just well, we just got to disconnect that link out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which should be. Oh, oh. oh. Them, them They're tight. Yeah, I'm gonna swap with this. Yep. That's like just five thousand lumens of yeah, power. Yeah, your eyeballs. And I will work on disconnecting this plastic link little piece without hopefully snapping it. But we can obviously get a new one. I think. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just like a dark 
Yeah, Sweet. I like door clips. You want me to hold something for you? You can hold my flashlight. Yeah. Look at her dish connected. Yeah, that's that thing. I think you gotta rotate it just like that. See? Now it. Now she's free. Come on, you little guy. You can always kind of just pull it back. But yeah, you go right underneath mm -hmm. it. Perfect. Yep. So yeah, are all the we see the last bolt right there, Mike? Right? I got one more. Wrench on the right wrench. there. Oh, yeah, I got my. I got three. So there's one hidden in here. Let's so get out her. Oh, yeah, she's nice. And tight. don't ram it into that rod. Try not to. Yeah, we'll try not to bend it. Ram rod? <laughs> hey, I know a guy that's got a ram rod. I do. Skid do. steer. <laughs> it may or may not. Uh, I'm keen to do pieces. All right, Keith, today. Further I think I don't because that's just the power valve assembly itself over there. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to disconnect any of that. That should all come off. But you're gonna have to take a mallet. Well, in our case, a steel hammer. I think as long as you're not hard on it. Or if you hit a screwdriver butt end into it. Now, where you guys got the hardware at? There. Head hey guys, there. we actually invested in some magnet trays. Look at that. Unbelievable, huh? Everywhere. They're just all full, so we have to continually buy more. That's good, Mike. As long as it's in there. Try not to. What's finishing a project, right? Who would do such a thing? It looks loose. Your side coming. Yep. Here, watch your fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can move the piston this way, which tells me it's probably not stuck to the board. So wait, can you help me pull up on this? There's probably dowels on the bottom. Oh, yep, she's, she's coming. coming. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to take the cylinder off. Caleb's going to help me. I'm going to try to see if I can clear the clutch cable here and the spark plug boot. See if you can kind of keep picking it up. Now you're stuck. Can we rock it back like this? Yeah, there we go. Oh, there she goes. We're almost out. Okay. And then you want to take that cable, twist it a little bit. There, there we go. go. I no. got her. Okay. Come on twist my way. It. Yep, now down a little bit. I think you got it. Yeah. Yep, rod's stuck. Welded right tight. Rod's seized right there. So oh, yeah. Ah. It welded on the rod. The yeah. I wish I the crank still on these. turns, but the rod But is, the rod lower you bearing. You can see the two it, yeah. When they start it without oil, which they might have, yep. if you ran straight gas, that's right where it's going to seize oh, first. Oh, there we go. It's blue. See how it's all blue? Yep, got hot. Yeah. So, you need a crank. You need a good uh, camera. But the piston, I mean... This does not even. Which how's the cylinder bore look? I think the cylinder. I thought fine. you could just throw a hole in that thing. You wanna yeah. open? Is it deep scuffs or not? I mean, it's just. No, no, no it's actually no, bad. No scuffs at all. The rule is, if you can catch your fingernail on it, it's got a scuff. I mean, right there's a little marks, but a hone will pull that out. Oh, yeah. As long as you can't, as long as your fingernails aren't. Well, the, nice, the nice thing is, there's even a little bit of film on the piston yet, so it had a little lube. Mm -hmm. But that those pinging is from the rod bearing getting hot. We'll pull the motor now. We'll start pulling the motor out, which is going to be involving the swing arm mm -hmm. and some bolts up front. And then what we're going to do is, you know, like I said, water water pump will get rebuilt. Mm -hmm. The seals. We'll check the clutch and see if it's goofy. Uh, they, they might have said they did a clutch at one time. Might just have to sand a little bit off the discs. So the first thing's going to be draining the oil, make mm -hmm. it lighter for weight reduction. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, weight reduction. Is and then we got to now we will have to remove the carburetor. Yep, carburetor and box. Air box. At least like from the front the tire. Back. Right. But that's the typical lower rod bearing failure. Um, most likely in this case, maybe lack of oil. Just because he said they may have ran straight, straight gas in it. But it's just weird because it has barely any Why? scuffing and the yeah, ring's not stuck. Yeah, that's. Weird. But it got hot, so it was lube. Oh, yeah. It's lacking lube down lacking there for lube sure. On the bottom end. Also, my other when I saw that pinging, I expected either that wrist pin bearing, which it isn't because you can move the piston, because when those let go, it makes detonation marks. The pins just come to the top, but the rod bearing on the bottom is very similar to the wrist pin bearing. So when that right. lets go, it does the same thing. Just sucks it up to the top and then hammers on the head. The head, I think we can just clean that up a little mm. bit. 
Uh, we found out Weisco piston, 48 mil bore, so that's stock, which is good for us. We don't have to probably oversize it, so we should be good with stock. You remove the carb by doing what? Carbon trader. Uh, all you gotta do is take the clamp fully off of the back air boot, and then you pry with a screwdriver on the bottom against the bowl, and it pushes the air box back that way behind the carb, and then you pull on the front, and that just fell off. <laughs> and you, you go on the front and you just kind of work it out. So that was good, got the carb out of the way, and then you took the stator cover off? Correct. And then the sprocket, which is a snap ring. Correct. Snap ring players. And the sprocket, you can sell the condition of the sprocket. It's perfect. And yeah, um, it cut me actually. It is so sharp. You can see it's all mountain, really yeah. peaky. You want those flat across instead of pointy like that. So yeah, new front sprocket for sure. And then what are we doing now? We're working on the motor mounts, getting that loose, which is going to be one here. One here and then one, one on the bottom. And then one on the bottom and then the swing arm. So And you can't, I mean, this holds the bolt on this side. There's a little ear on the swing arm. And you gotta hammer it out from that side. Probably need a punch. Uh, side note, we also removed the clutch cable. Yes. You will have to take your adjuster and turn it in. All the way in. So you have the most slack that you can get. And then Spike kind of just pulled the arm ahead with one hand and yanked the cable out the front and then slipped out the back. And then to get the cable out of the clutch arm, Turn the cable all the way back to the notch facing the Kickstarter, line it up, then push it out the bottom, which is this end right, right here. So, not too bad. So now we'll work on getting the motor out, and then that'll conclude this tear down, and then we'll continue when we actually take the engine apart. 